Thank you very much. Jeremy and I just met. We're, we're all mates now, about 20 minutes ago, and uh, we're doing a video because I think this is going to go on uh, for a few other people to have a look at as well. Um, I'll just do a quick background about me. My name's John Lynn. I'm a retired teacher, and uh, I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey, uh, what I did. Just put your hand up if you can. You just let me know if you're an engineer or someone who has an IQ of 300 or something like that. I'm just, I, I wasn't sure who I was going to meet down here. So um, that's, that's, our, that's our home, that's where we live. And uh, I took that photo a couple of weeks ago when I was walking back with the dog. I go for a walk, we got 700 metres from our home down to the front gate. And, and I thought, well, that's a good picture. It was taken with, uh, with my phone, so it's not fantastic, but we'll probably use it on the book, the books at the publishers at the moment. So that's probably what it'll look like. And then uh, there were all these nice things that people say about me put on the back cover. So that's pretty much what's going to happen. Um, everyone got a fly here uh, for, for turning up here and I had a bit of a read of it and I thought, wow, I better meet this guy. Um, I can hardly wait to hear what he's got to say. So, And I haven't run through this, this is the first time. I do go out and do talks on energy efficiency, but this is the first time I've, I've done this. Uh, uh, Trevor asked me to... Oh, we're just going to get the sound. Yep. Trevor asked me to um, just talk, talk about my home. But I'm going to, going to go through and show you basically the process that I went through to get where we are now. So. Um, my background's in education, so I do things in a bit of structure. As a teacher, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, then I'm going to tell you. So basically what, what we'll do today, tonight, or this afternoon, or what is it, the evening, um, the structure of this, we'll have a look at the location, the topography of, of where we've built, where our home is, and the challenges that we faced. Uh, what got me started, that's probably important, because everyone sitting here at some stage wasn't or didn't know about this stuff. Something has happened to bring you here. And I do go out and talk at libraries, uh, different places and other places. I did a talk down the Gold Coast um, recently. And people who turn up to those venues, to those events, normally know a little bit. And I always say when I go out to a library, I've done a few of those, and I've got a few more coming up in the next few weeks, that there could be 60,000 people sitting here, but you guys are here and they're not. So there's a big difference between the knowledge that you guys already have. You've already started on a journey, and I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey that we went on. I have to do it pretty quickly, because it's, it's about a quarter of a century long, so I'll condense it down to about half an hour. OK, so what got me started? That's the first house we're going to have a look at, because not all houses are the same. Um, then we'll talk about a cottage, which we call a cottage now. It's actually not a cottage, it's a shed that's beside our home, and uh, that's we used to weekend that, in that when we first moved out. And the next one is called the Shouse, and uh, that's that's short for shed house because uh, I don't like to brag, but I moved our family out of, the, out of our nice comfortable home into a shed and we lived in a shed for 18 months. Uh, and then of course uh, we built the house and of course they got better every time, every time I did something. I learned a little bit more and we just got better and better and better. And then I'll have a look at the energy, uh, what energy sources we, we use and uh, the thermal stability of the home because that's pretty important. That's what got me started on this in the first place. And then we'll have a look at some stats of our place and also the advantages. So, um, so just I'm just going to personalise this a little bit. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the animals and the people that are up there. So I'm just going to take a couple of minutes so you can see, hey, this is where we live. This is some of the animals and this is some of the people. So when we go through the structure of the presentation, I'll just highlight the animals and the people and hopefully a little bit of time for a bit of recap. And that's the order that we're going to go through in. So at the end of the end of the uh, the talk, hopefully we'll have covered all those uh, all those topics. So that's our that's our place in the daytime. That's looking from almost the same position, and uh, it's a lovely place to live. My wife and I have talked about moving somewhere else, but every time we look, there's just nothing any better. It does have its challenges, which I'll show you some of those in a moment. On the uh, on the uh, right hand side, the people on the video won't be able to see that, but that's our that's the cottage, and over the hill is the shower, you can't see it from there. Okay, that's looking at our, our lounge room window, we see creatures like that and lots of them. And we also see magnificent animals like this and they'll be turning up at our place very shortly because it's, it's breeding season. And that's my oldest daughter, she's just moved back from Canberra and working up this way now. So uh, that's from our front porch just looking down to the driveway which is 700 metres and goes out through our gate across the creek to get to the road. We also get these guys there as well. They're not as um, welcome, but uh, we get all sorts of different ones. That one you don't want to be mucking around with. And uh, we get these guys. We've got three of these that are standard, um, what you call, uh, issue on our property. And uh, he's the smallest one. The biggest one's nearly seven foot. 
and um, the other one's a little bit smaller than that. So he goes shopping uh, probably once a week and he ends up on the front veranda. So uh, he's not as friendly as, um, as he probably could be and I like it that way. So we don't leave doors open. I take a few photos. That's, um, I had a whole heap of photos, but there's half an hour of photos of the animals up there. So we get these guys to grow up and, and uh, then they become part of the, the flock. You just don't know which ones they are. They just gel in because a property handles so many, so many wallabies, so many birds, so many this, so many that. That's just the, just the way the system works. We also get these guys, uh, scrub turkeys. Um, that's a common name, or bush turkeys, or um, they're also known as Taligala. So, um, and I have heard they're very good eating. I've never eaten one, but I have heard if you put if you put them in a pot, cut one up and put it in a pot, and put a stone in the pot, when, you, when the fork goes in, that's where I'm getting some support from them. Then and they're good. Then they're good to eat. Suck on the stone. Then suck on the stone. <laughs> we also get these guys there as well, which which lets us know that our um, the environment's in in reasonable sort of shape. And these guys um, are pretty pretty common around at our place. That's when I, I was doing a job and he was giving me the hard time, so I put him in an ice cream container. But he's, um, he's got to check and make sure everything's going according to plan. So they're pretty nosy sort of creatures. We also get these guys uh, doing some calisthenics or whatever you call it, some stretching on the, on the windows every now and then. Of course, the back windows with the lights on, it's just um, it's prime shopping for these, uh, for these guys, prime real estate. Um, that, I didn't take that photo, I pulled that down from the net. I couldn't find one that I'd taken. That's a Stony Creek frog. And they are peculiar to our area. They don't exist anywhere else in the world, only where we are. So, um, a magnificent little little frog. The, the ones that we get up around our area are a little bit a little bit uh, browner than that, but um, they're, they're only found in Stony Creek, nowhere else on the planet. We also get these guys. That's our front gate uh, off in the distance, and uh, he's just on his way down to the creek. Uh, I call that shot a stink in the sink. We get lots of those. Um, good shopping on our on our back wall. And we get the very common, very common creatures up our way. We have got platypus up there. I haven't got. I was going to have a whole heap of papers about that was there, but that's not that's not why we're here tonight. And we get the uncommon as well. So I'll let you look at that for a little while. And I've only ever seen one of those in, in 25 years. That's a bit bizarre. The um, butterfly house in Bridey Island has several ones in there. Pretty large ones. Yep. Yep. And here's another guy that's a bit, I had trouble getting him in focus and uh, you've got to move fast because they don't stick around for too long. That's uh, that was a very strange creature as well, stick insect. And we also get wild dogs up at our place as well. And um, <laughs> when they end up growing into their, into their, um, their collars, they're, they're part of our family. So that's our family. That's, uh, that's about uh, the size we were when we moved out. And we're a pretty normal sort of group, I think. Pretty normal sort of family. But what we've done is a little bit, especially 20 years ago, it's not, not quite that normal. We, uh, we moved out from suburbia and we moved out onto a rock of land and we roughed it out a little bit out there. But we've never been sorry. It's been a fantastic adventure. And uh, I'm going to share some of that with you, with you now. Okay, of course the girls don't uh, stay the same size forever. They've all grown up now. And uh, that's a photo taken fairly recently, so everyone's pretty much moved away and we're still happy living out there where we are. Okay, so that's the animals and the people. So the next thing we're going to look at is the location, topography, and some of the challenges that we have living out there. Because it's not the same as living in suburbia. However, having said that, everything that we've done up there, as far as the house is concerned, you can do, you can do in suburbia. We've done nothing any different. That's uh, the top left-hand side. I will just uh, the people who might see this on video won't uh, won't be able to see the red mark, but that's our block there. We're 156 acres, and we bought a state forest there. There's 4,200 hectares of state forest behind us. Uh, I moved out there because of a deal I made with a 12-year-old boy, believe it or not, and that was 50 years ago. And that kid's here doing a presentation right now, so that that was a deal. And uh, so uh, that's that's our uh, that's it, where we live, just there. We're 700 metres from there to our to our front gate. That's coming in from the east. I think that's uh, that's a shot that I would have pulled off the internet, and um, same as that one. So we put the dam in in 2009 because we had a big fire that went through there. Unfortunately, um, don't get me started on that, but um, it uh, it destroyed a lot of old growth trees, and we haven't seen or heard a koala out there since 2009, which is very disappointing. But anyway, um, 
there's other people down south that just recently have fared a lot worse than that. Um, the main, well it's not a main road, but the road that goes out to uh, what we call the day area, that, that road is Stony Creek Road, I'm oh, sorry, Fletcher Road, and if you travel on the other side of the road and go a couple of kilometres, you'll end up at the Woodford Folk Festival. But that's, that's the road that goes into our place, and it's, uh, it's very nice to, uh, when you get to that spot, to say, hey, it's really good to go home. It's nice to go home. Um, the crossing over Stony Creek, is uh, that dried up. I only took that a couple of weeks ago, and that's the third time that the creek's dried up since 1932. So it's pretty rare. But we do get water going over the crossing, and that's a no-go zone for that car. That's my wife's car because the council uh, engineers in their wisdom have a lower area over there even though I pleaded with them on site not to do it. So we get reined in even when it's safe to go over on, on the cross. But anyway, got the engineers in here? No. <laughs> Any council engineers? No. So what I want you to do is uh, just, just for the next photo, for the reference point, you see that post there? I'll show you where that is. For the people who might be listening to this or watching this on, on uh, video, there's, a, uh, there's a, a post to the right of the, of the, of the car that's a, um, that's a power pole, so uh, it disappears. That's our crossing there, and that's, that's not uncommon. We have been flooded in for the most 17 days. It's a bit of an adventure. We normally know a little bit in advance. The first time last Thursday, one of my kids, who's still at home, she was rained out, so she had to go to someone's place, and there were phone calls going back. So if I look a little bit secondhand today, it's because I've been getting phone calls going back, making sure we know where everybody is. And my wife got home from work today, I'll, I'll stay down in Brisbane tonight, but um, I think everyone can get home, so that's good. All right, so that's that's basically that's basically our, our place, and um, that's 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 where we live. It's uh, we put the dam we put in in 2009. It's a it's a great place to live and a great place for our kids to have grown up. And just looking at that photo, I just marvel at um, at what we've done over the last 25 years. And we've been busy, but you just don't realise how much how much we've achieved. We've got a little bit of undulation on the block, and that was a practice for a billy cart race. We had a million people out there, and um, there were a few crashes, but nobody caught on fire. And uh, the kids all had buggies when they were growing up, because I'm a bit of a petrol head. Uh, as, you, as you can see, everyone gets a buggy, including me. The only person in the family who didn't have one was my wife, and she used to go for, for a run with me. And uh, as I said, it was a great place for the kids to grow up, and obviously for the dog as well. Uh, and, and, and for me too. Does anyone remember the banana splits? Yes. Yeah, when I was a kid I wanted one of those, so I thought I'm going to get one, so I had one for a few years and everyone who came out to our place, we went for a bit of an excursion and we'd end up in the, in the creek and it was just uh, a bit of an adventure for some people who haven't been on one. Alright, so we'll get started. What got me started uh, on, on the home, that, uh, or building the home that we did, was the home that we lived in. When we got married we lived in a, in a place just north of Brisbane. I won't give you the address because it's obviously someone else's home now. So uh, this is the first house we're going to look at. This is basically what got me started. This home is on the north side of Brisbane and uh, my wife and I have just been married. It's like a Fred Astaire movie. We moved down to Brisbane and uh, we we're going to live happily ever after there and raise a family. And uh, our first child was born and uh, that was supposed to be her room where the window is but that's the western wall. And I think everyone who's here knows that's not a good idea. And if you have a look at how much thermal mass is on the outside of that building, you will know that it's going to hold a lot of heat. And inside, inside that home, in the summertime, it could be over 40 degrees. And it was hotter inside than what it was outside. It got up to over 43 degrees, 42, 43 degrees one summer, and it was like that for a few days in a row, and it's just disgraceful. We used to spend a lot of time outside. As a matter of fact, the only complaint my wife has about our new home is that we, we don't go outside anymore because our place is better inside summer and winter. Uh, that's, that's the backyard and that's the western wall and um, that's a shed I transplanted and I'll talk about sheds in a moment. So um, it, the, the home was orientated pretty, pretty correctly, quite well, it was, it was basically facing north but it had a lot of other issues and this home here it would have cost an absolute fortune to have retrofitted it. So some, some buildings you can fix and some you just can't. And this was one that you probably couldn't without a huge expense. Here's another piece of the story. The shed behind the, the shed in front, we were actually only four square metres under industrial coverage. I'll put another shed outside the house, which I'll show you in a moment. But that shed in the, in the backyard there, behind the red shed, that was there when we moved down. This one I transplanted, the red one I transplanted from Ipswich 
from a place I had there. And that shed down the back there was cool in the summertime. And our house was hot. And that's what got me thinking, what's going on here? And I went to some other people's places and their homes were cooler and ours was hot and I thought there's got to be something in this. So things weren't the way they were now, the, the internet wasn't what it was and uh, so I got a whole heap of books, a lot of them sent me in the wrong direction but um, you live and you learn. So that shed is part of, is part of the story as much as the house is. So uh, I put this shed down the side to, to, uh, to stop the sun, the northern sun from hitting the house and it did reduce the internal temperatures a little bit. And another little trick, I used to go out when the sun went down and I used to hose the roof down so the latent heat of evaporation would take some of the heat away and it reduced the temperature inside. So um, that was also a good trick as well. My wife said I was going to destroy the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the, the view from the road, the Sorry. presentation. I didn't think it had any street presence to start with so we didn't, we didn't lose anything. Anyway, uh, we pulled it down because it wasn't, it wasn't uh, approved and what we had to do to get it approved I wasn't prepared to do. So um, we pulled it down and we transplanted it put up on our, on our property. Uh, I do like sheds, I'm not allowed to build anymore apparently. So we sold that, but before we sold that we'd already been up on our property and we'd had a, had a, uh, a little adventure up there and we had a barbecue and we'd already worked out where the wind eddies were, where the cold air came, we, we, this was three years and we worked out where we wanted to build. So we didn't just go up there and say, hey, this is a good spot. We, we did a little bit of homework and we camped out and we worked out where we were going to be. That was the only building that was on the property at the time, and uh, it was a bit of a do or up right? and my wife said, no, can you build something new? I said, oh, all right. So, uh, so we did. So the first thing that we built, we called the cottage, and it wasn't the cottage then, it was just a, a shed. And when we, when we built the cottage, I knew nothing about anything. I knew very, very little about anything. So the shed was just plonked in a spot where we thought it was a good place to put it, and that's what we did. So. That's, a, that's a, um, uh, an area, of obviously a drone's eye view of, of our place and that place there for the people on the video um, on to the right of the home, that's what we call the cottage. It was just a shed to start with and we used a weekend in it when we, when we came up on the, on the weekend. Also my eldest daughter uh, started, we knew we were going to move out to Woodford and I wanted her to grow up with her friends because I was a raft kid and we lived in every house in Australia. So. Um, I thought uh, I'd like my kids to have a bit of stability, so uh, that's what we did. That's what we did, and uh, we'll, we'll, I'll come back to this photo. That's the, that's the shouse over there. All right, so we're going to talk about this building here, cottage. That's the finished product there. It's a lot greener now. This is all all uh, green up again, and um, it's, uh, it's the grass is very long at the moment because it's just been very very wet, as you know. So what we did was we we levelled out the area we need to need to level out, and behind me is where we put the cottage, and. Uh, we, uh, we constructed it and put it up. That's a fellow called Laurie Johnson. He, um, he did seven plans for our home. And I'd ring him up every couple of weeks and say, Laurie, got to make another change, mate. Because every time I learned something, I thought, we've got to put this in. We've got to put this in. <laughs> so um, that's, uh, that's our little uh, cottage up on the property. And in the winter time, it was the same temperature inside there as it was outside. And in the summertime, it was a lot hotter, a lot hotter. And we had a jam session in it, because that's what you've got to do. And we put some solar panels on. These were old solar panels that, because uh, none of, like, 20 plus years ago, 25 years ago, this, it's, it's, there weren't too many people with solar panels on their roofs. They just weren't that, that popular. And these were uh, batteries that I got from uh, X, X uh, golf cart batteries that couldn't quite make it back from the 18th hole. And um, well, it wasn't a bad life. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. This was inside the, the place. I put some boards around it. We had a couple of red belly blacks got in there, and they used to hide behind the um, hide behind the boards there. And I pulled a couple out by hand. I don't recommend it, but when you've got kids there, it's, <laughs> you've got to do things you don't necessarily want to do. And uh, we had no, we didn't have any cupboards or anything like that, so everything was just hung up on the floor. But uh, it was it was good to, to weekend there, and. Um, it's, we've got some fond memories of it. So where the, where the car's parked, that's where the house is going to go, but not for a little bit longer yet. So I'm just, that, that's, that's what the, the uh, cottage looks like at the moment. And I uh, was just talking to Jeremy, and we were talking about some of the building materials. I'm glad I put this in now. I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm glad I'm, I'm putting this in. Because what we did was, I call this houseifying the shed. We basically um, 
basically turned it into a little house and uh, turned it into a more livable area. It's not a livable area, but we've, we've made it a little bit more livable. So I got some stud framing made up, and uh, this, this is, well, it's not insulation because it doesn't have an R rating, but it's air gap, air gap um, material, and I would highly recommend it. I've used it, uh, and I've, I've recommended it. I shouldn't use the word recommend. I use the word suggest. I've suggested that people consider putting it on their homes. It is fantastic stuff. Uh, we've got a shed on the western side of our home, and you can't put your hand on the, on the outside of the shed, but on the inside with this stuff you can. A baby could put their hand on it. What exactly is it? What do you call it? I got asked that and, uh, because I've done a, a whole heap of different jobs. There are different makes and models and I can't remember what that one, but there, there, are, there are different uh, models on, on, the, uh, on the net. We can chase them up and have a look a bit later. I do know where you can get some from. I got, I got some from a, from a place in, in Caboolture. So I've still got a bit left over for a couple of other projects, but I highly recommend it. It's, it's a foil, yeah, but it's got a, it's got uh, air in between. It. What thickness? It's about, it's about, yeah. Because that, because the heat's got a transfer over, and you've got, there's no, there's no conduction, there's no convection, um, there's no transmission. It's so that the heat is basically isolated. Um, oh, at the end of this, I'm happy to answer as many questions as, as you as you want to ask. So um, we put some, we put bats in. I didn't put them in the roof because I don't think that's a great idea. Uh, if you get any moisture up there, it's certainly not a good idea. But we did put it in the walls, and we also put it in the walls inside because it's very good for, um, for sound, absorbing sound. Uh, we bought a second-hand kitchen that was uh, someone who had a perfectly good kitchen wanted to upgrade, and uh, we thought that would look good in here. So we worked out where all the pieces went, we, we put it in, and um, so that's pretty much what the, what the cottage looks like now. And, uh, I had a, a lady, actually, she rang me tonight, she's a photographer, and um, we, she was out taking photographs at our place, and we walked into that shed, it was a hot day, it was up in the high 30s, and th the shed was, this little cottage was open, and we walked in and we sat down around the table to, uh, to do a couple of things, and she said, boy, it's nice in here. So, that, I would, I'd be happy to live in a shed like that, to, uh, I would build one of those, and, and they're a lot less expensive to build than some houses, and thermally they are fantastic. Because the ground temperature of, of the, um, uh, is, is 23 degrees, we're very fortunate here, so if you've got a slab on ground, and you've got it, the, uh, the ambient temperatures inside are going to, if you, if you separate it from the outside temperatures, they're going to limit to 23 degrees. And when it's winter, 23 degrees is nice, and when it's summer, 23 degrees is nice. So that's what our house does, and that's what the, that's what the shed does. We've got it. We've got it through the whole shed. We've got it through the whole shed. Yeah. You've got it. You've got to isolate the outside from the inside. So basically, it's in, encompass the whole thing. Yep. Absolutely. So that, that's a building with very low external thermal mass. It's just steel. It'll heat up quickly, but it doesn't hold any heat, which means in the night time it's it's not it's not uh, it's not hot inside. It won't raise the temperature inside. It just doesn't hold the heat. All right, so that's the cottage. And um, so the next building that we built was the shower. And this time I was a bit, a bit of a wake up to how things work. Even though I'm not sorry that, that we, we built what we call our cottage, and, and we could retrofit that. The other house uh, that, we, that got me started, there were, I don't think there would be enough money to retrofit and make that a better place. It was just, it, it would have been too difficult. But a steel shed, strange as it may seem, is a lot easier to, um, to, to retrofit to make it more, um, comfortable inside. So our shouse, our shared house, uh, that's on the top left hand side of the of the um, of the of the picture there. It's that little square bit towards the towards the left. We've actually added on the southern side here, we've added a um, that was our bathroom that we added because we lived there for 18 months and that's uh, an extension that we put on a little bit later. So um, that's where we put it. Behind us is the cottage and over there is the shed. We, have a, we had a 25 year plan and we're nearly up to the 25 year plan but we're probably only 18 years into, into it because um, there's, all, there's always other things going on. But I think we're, we're sort of almost on target. So we put a container over there to store all our bits and pieces and beside the container we, we put a, a block shed up. Lots and lots of thermal mass, exactly the opposite to the steel shed. And uh, when the concrete was poured I had to go down to Melbourne for a couple of days and I pegged it all out. It was, it was 11 degrees and 48 minutes east of Magnetic North, which is basically what we need to be there. And in my absence, the fellow who did the pour, the builder, 
decided, hmm, this would look a bit nicer if it ran parallel with the bank. So he changed the orientation. And you know, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression, and you don't get a second chance to lay a couple of, I don't know how many tons of concrete went down, but it'd be hard to turn that round now. So uh, another thing that was a bit of a pain too, this is what I'm, I'm bringing this up because you, you can't trust builders and the guys who you think should know all this stuff, I've met so, so many of them who just don't have a clue, don't have a clue. I'm not knocking them, but you'd reckon they'd know a bit more than they do. So this fellow was a builder, he'd been a builder for 25 years, I handed him over the job, I would never do that again, um, I'd always be on site. So you learn as you go along. Another thing that happened, uh, you can see the overhang here, that's on the, uh, on the eastern side, and uh, it, had, well, it had the same overhang on the western side. You can see there's no overhang here on the northern side. So um, that, was, that was on the plan, as you can see. It's on the plan, but he, it was too difficult for him to, apparently, for him to manufacture the roof trussing that way. So he said, you wanted an overhang? So he put it on the east and the west. I think everyone sitting here knows it does make a scrap of difference. As a matter of fact, it's been a pain in the backside because we now get snakes up there and the wind blows the, blows the ends. It's just, it's caused me a lot of grief. So um, you can see quite clearly, I don't know why he can't read a plan. I mean, that's pretty obvious there. Um, I've still got a bit of a twinge about it when I talk about it. I just cannot believe that that happened. So um, that's basically what we were chasing and that's not what happened. So if you're thinking of building or you've got, I was talking to someone here earlier who've got kids who are going to build, uh, what can I say? Know a bit more than your builder. It's, sometimes it's not that hard. They they have to be compliant with the with the natters now to be a six star. It's, it's a standalone home, and they just outsource that. So what have we got to do to make this happen? So um, I was just saying to Jeremy, if you're going to build a house, uh, I, I say um, before you before you go and see a builder. Uh, I use the saying on, on, on a site that I that I um, that I use where I put put some of the um, programs that I run. Uh, I say you don't put your shoes and socks on, it's just a saying. You, you put your socks on first and then your shoes. If you, if, you, if you do it the other way around, you don't end up with a good result. You put your socks on, your shoes on first and a sock. The result's not the same. You've got to do things in the right order. So I suggest to people, go and get your natters approved plans, get, your, get your, your, um, your block of land that you know is going to cater for what you need to do, and then you go shopping for a builder who can do the building for you uh, at the price you, you, can, you can afford. If you do it the other way around, you may have the same dramas we've got, you might end up with something that looks like that. And uh, that's, that's really difficult to fix. Getting on with the story, that's on the southern side, so we put up, that's where we put our, um, our, uh, our bathroom. And I got some old, um, and they certainly are old now, uh, solar panels. They were very, very rare, but uh, Telstra had them. And uh, so I, uh, I, I um, got 800 watts, and uh, they were very second-hand at the time. They certainly are very second-hand now, because that was a very long time ago. They could be 150 years, I know I'm just joking, but they would be very, very old. I've got panels up there that are very, very old that I, that I use now. The ones we had on the, on the cottage, they were pretty old when I got those. Because now I've got 11k of panels sitting in the shed, and they're all fairly recent ones for a project that I've got to do. And they're so readily available now, but 25 years ago they certainly weren't. Okay, so that's, that's the, uh, that's the, 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 uh, on, the, on the southern side, that's where we, that was the, the uh, frame that I built to put the panels on and that's basically how it turned out. And if you have a look on the, uh, to the right for the people on the video and to the, to the, uh, to the east there, I, I put those um, coverings in to sort of make up for, the, uh, for what wasn't done on the plan. It's very disappointing. So um, uh, maybe Trevor, Trevor will get to see this, Trevor Birrell. I was, I was um, a student in his classroom about uh, well, over 20 years ago now, and I haven't, I haven't, I spoke to him on the phone a few times, but I haven't seen him for, for 20 plus years. But he will, he will notice some of those guys there because they were also students down at Ithaca TAFE as well. And of course, in those days, someone who was doing something like this, it was unheard of. So uh, a few of the guys came out, and um, we just had the bare necessities there, just food, clothing, and shelter, and and a uh, industrial uh, electrical test bench. That's all we had at the time, pretty much. And um, so they came out for the experience, and um, there's some of the guys there who, who probably went into business and running businesses now for um, doing uh, solar installations. Uh, I don't even want to talk about those batteries. I learned a lot about those batteries. They were old and ancient when I bought them, but there was, there's, um, uh, I uh, get a twinge every time I talk about it. That's what we put on the, on the shed. There should have been a lot more kilowatt hours of storage, but there just wasn't. 
we'll, we'll just keep moving. But we had a 400 watt um, pure sine wave inverter. That was just pure luxury, absolute luxury. And we had a little bit more horsepower, even with those older batteries, than we had at the cottage. So we, we pretty much lived like kings. And um, when the kids were watching a video in the old days, and the, um, the fridge would turn on, and the, and the, uh, the video and the, and the TV would uh, turn off. And uh, I was going to say, but I'll add this because it's all good fun. We used to have um, outdoor, outdoor movies at our place and I would work out how many, how many watt hours we had that we could afford to spend for the night to run a movie. So the movie that we were going to watch, I had to work out how long it was. And um, So you're sitting there with your calculator working out, why are you doing this? Why can't we just watch the video? <laughs> well, it's no good you get to the end and then everything, you know, 10 minutes before the end, the whole thing closes down. So there's a, you have to know that stuff. Thank goodness there are abacuses that we can use. So that's that's what the uh, the building turned out like. On the northern side there, you can see we've got. Uh, I had to uh, do some retrofitting, um, and uh, and then out the uh, as we went on a little bit further, we put the extension on out the front. And um, those uh, those um, doors don't actually go anywhere. And I had a friend of mine turn up there, and he laughed. He laughed for about ten minutes. He couldn't believe that I would put doors there like that. He said, "But they don't go anywhere, John." They said they don't have to, they do something else. So they're on the northern side, and I'm sure you can work out what they do. Um, and that's, the, that's uh, I can't even remember now, I should, I should know what they were, that would be close to the winter solstice. So it's not perfect, we're still getting sun on the windows, but it's not shining through the, through the windows. So, and it's, it's actually pretty good inside because there's a lot of blocks there, and uh, we, get, we get some nice cool, cool breezes that fall down from the hill. There's a, there's, as I said, 4,200 hectares behind us, and there's a there's a hill that's 350 metres high. And uh, in the in the summertime, we get some beautiful breezes that come down. It's like air conditioning. It's fantastic. So that's basically what it looks like now. That's back to modern times. And uh, we use it to put machinery in. Of course, we have a jam session in there. Got a few people around, and um, <clears throat> so that's what it's like. All right. So now we get to the house. I better check my time. I better get moving. So um, that's the house in the middle there, the one with the panels on the top of it. And that's where it was to be built. Everything's all worked out and organised. That's the slab we put down. And we had a, we had a choice between putting a waffle pot on there, or these were actually dug into the ground. And um, we went this way. Excuse me, we went this way for, for a reason. The reason was we would get Mother Nature would do more of the heavy lifting to control the temperature inside our home. So it cost a bit more for concrete, but it's a lot nicer inside now. So, um, so it's less expensive to do it the other way, but if I was building again, I would do, I would do this all over again. So the slab went down, and um, we waited for it to go off, and we waited for, uh, we waited for the the 28 days for it to reach its proper MPH rating, MPA rating, and um, we waited and we waited, and we lived over in the shed, over in the background. There we had another, had another one on the way then, and uh, then it started raining. 108 days, and then it started raining. And the days that the, the day that the, the uh, bricklayers turned up, we waited for a particular team. I had a mate of mine who had worked in the industry. Uh, well, he worked with, I, I can say, AV Jennings for um, for about 20 years, just short of 20 years. And he worked in an office with four other guys, sorry, with three other guys, so there were four of them, and they used to hand over a house pretty much every day. I think Bruce told me they, what, the best he, he ever did was 33 houses in one month. And the, and the house, I call it our house from hell, that, that we used to live in was built by the company that he, he worked for. So um, Trevor, Trevor said in one of the comments that he made, I think it was uh, for, for the book, um, he, he used the term um, uh, rental lemons in the suburbs and uh, it was even worse for us because we actually bought the place so um, anyway it, uh, it did rain and it did rain and it did rain it, we, um, so we, we had to run up well we needed power over because we, we, we were there for 18 months and it didn't stop raining for a long time that's uh, don't worry no one's going to get electrocuted that's a 24 volt um, DC generator so it's all good we're all safe but we couldn't run a gen set too close to the house because you just don't want the fumes there with the kids so it, you can see it's pretty, pretty wet out there and the bricks have got to dry out. Eventually, it dried out. Hallelujah, it dried out. And we started building, and the bricks started going together. And the brickies turned up, and they did a fantastic job. And the house went up. 
and it looked better and better every day. So it's double brick, is it? It's double brick, yeah. There's 27,700 bricks inside and out, so when when the temperature is pretty stable, it stays stable. But <clears throat> I will actually, I'll show you, I'll show you the performance in a moment. Yep. So the day we're putting uh, that truss up, that's actually Bruce Moore up there, and that's me, um, the weedy little guy there, who's um, very fashionably dressed. It was 43 degrees that day. And uh, we had we had five days of very very hot weather, but we had to get this up because we had other well had to run on schedule. So so um, I said to Bruce, uh, he he had finished up with AB Genesis, he'd gone into business on his own. He had a bit of interim time. I said um, it was funny because he finished up on Friday, and and I said, how about you come and work for me, and I'll work for you. So he uh, he helped me with the project. Basically, took over the project because he knew all the guys. He had them in his back pocket. He was a um, he was project manager and I laid it for him. So he pushed me pretty hard. He said, come on, we've got to get this done. So it was great. Um, originally we had, um, we were going to have clear story windows on it, but we couldn't find someone, you can see it in the plan there, and uh, that's actually to the north there, but um, we couldn't get anyone to engineer it. And I tried really hard, but sometimes you've got to make some compromises, and that's what we did. So we ended up with those trusses. I just thought I'd show you that, because what you do build, if you, if you are going to build something yourself, it's a lot of fun. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> actually, if, you, if you're not allowed to mention the word mullions in our home, I still get a... Still get a what year did you do? Uh, we, we, um, we put our plans together in, in 1999. Actually, I probably should mention this. This was before um, 2003 when the Natus ratings came out. So um, we, uh, my, my father-in-law lived next door to a fellow who had a BERS program. Um, a few people know about that, the, the ratings. There's three programs, Accurate 5 and Birds and so forth. I can't remember the other one at the moment. Um, anyway, it's, it's a program that, that uh, you have to put all this information in on, on your home and you won't get approval to build a home unless it comes up to a six-star rating. Um, at the time, they, it's a rating out of ten. It's called a Natter's rating. Um, so, uh, and we can talk about that a little bit later. That's something that if you're going to build, you need to know about that. Uh, if, you, if you're building multi-storey, it has to be a five-star rating. You won't get approval unless it's a six-star. Up until 2003, uh, I read a government report once that said most of the homes that were built in Australia wouldn't even get to a, get to a rating one. Ours went off the scale at nine. It only went up to nine then, and ours went off the, off the chart. So I don't really know what ours is. I probably could have it done again. It's not fantastic. It's not a, a passive house, if you know what a passive house is, but it's a solar... It's a passive solar home and it performs well because we don't get the extremities in temperatures where we are, generally speaking. It happens occasionally. The last time we had a frost was nearly 20 years ago. So, um, and I took photos of that. I, I put up on one of the courses I've got. So, record everything, document everything. All right, so the house did get, eventually did get built and we moved in. We actually moved in a little bit early because it was really, really cold in the shed because we didn't have a ceiling and, the, of course, the, the warm air would just go up and we'd freeze it out. We had, a, uh, we had a fire in the shed, which I very sensibly put in, and uh, you had to be within two inches, probably better inside the fire itself, because <laughs> <laughs> it was a good idea at the time, but it just didn't work. Like a screen door in a submarine, it wasn't as functional as you might have thought. That was the, that was the plan. You can see there we've got a um, library and a retreat and so forth, and I, I, did, I knew nothing about zoning. And uh, so we, we, uh, I went back to Laurie and we changed the plans around. That was the plan, that was the plan of the house we eventually ended up with because it's important where you put the rooms in your home, what you're going to do with them. Uh, so depending on what climate zone you're in, the climate zone we're in, that was the, that was the best fit for us. We thought it's worked out very well. I'm very happy. I probably wouldn't change much at all. We might put a, a different door over here. That's one thing we do complain about. But apart from that, we, we've done quite well. So uh, that's, that's the whole building. This, uh, the little square on the, on the northern side there, you can see that's our battery house. The standards now, um, that was one thing Trevor picked up in the book for me, which was good of him. I started writing the book two years ago, and uh, he went through and had a read of it. He said, oh, you'll have to update the uh, battery standards. So they, were, they came into effect in July, uh, uh, June, sorry, was it June? June or July, doesn't matter, about that time. Yep. So, um, so that's our battery house there. And I'll talk to you about what, what batteries we've got. We're going to go for a walk through that door now. We're going to have a look down the corridor. So that's where we're going to go now. That's walking inside the home. It's a little bit bricky, a little bit industrial. But, um, hang a few pictures up. 
That's, uh, that's my lovely wife there who puts up with me and she's <laughs> run the distance and it's certainly been an adventure for her. And uh, she still appreciates having as much electricity as she wants and also a flushing toilet. So um, life just gets better all the time. And now we've got two flushing toilets, it's fantastic. That's uh, looking over to the kitchen. That's from the kitchen looking over to into the lounge room. So why did you do double brick as opposed to uh, chip block or a vessel block, you know? Because of the amount of thermal mass inside the home, what it does is it, 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 holds, it, hold, it, it stabilises the temperature. So if, you, if we close the house up, which we do, we put snakes under the door so we don't get uh, heat inside and out or we don't get any convection, and that home will be pretty much 23 degrees. I'll go, I'll go over that shortly, but the, if you've got a lot of thermal mass, internal thermal mass, it, it, it stabilises the temperature. So we had a, we had a fellow... Oh, actually, I will tell you the story. If I go a little bit over time, is that, is that OK? Yep. Um, I did have this in and then I pulled it out because my missus said, this is way too long, we've got too many photos, so I, I scrunched it up. We had, um, uh, we, we put on these things called tank vacs and they, because we we're, were into the energy efficiency thing, and Mother Nature uses atmospheric pressure to clean out the bottom of your tank. They're a great idea. You can have a look on our site. I, I think they're great. I only put good things on our site. So, um, anyway, the fellow who, who, who puts them up, the, uh, the authorised fellow in Australia, uh, I asked him if he'd come out and I, I gave him, if I gave him a hand to put them in, which of course took him twice as long. And when we'd finished putting in the tank vacs in, it was easy for us to walk through our garage into, out to the front to get to his, his, uh, his ute. And when we walked through the house, he said, oh, you're air-conditioned in here. And I said, oh, no, it's just, a, just the design of the house. He said, no, no, you've got to be running an air conditioner because it was about 37 degrees outside. It was 23 degrees inside. He said, no, that's not right. So we went for a bit of a walk around the house. He said, I can't believe this. So uh, we had a bit of a chat and he said, and you worked all that out? I said, no. I said, the Greeks knew all about this. I didn't, I didn't, I, I've just learned this. This is uh, not, not of my doing. Um, I just, I've, just, I've just found out about this and I've, I've put it in the house. And he was a bit fascinated with it because a lot more, I think it was close to 40 through the day, but when I took the, took the photo, it was 37 and a half degrees, but it was 23 degrees inside our home. And it's 23 degrees inside our home when it's 37 degrees outside because we've got so much thermal mass inside. It's advantageous when you have stable temperatures, but if you have a heat wave, I'll show you that in a moment because there's, there's, there's pros and cons for everything. So we'll run, we'll run through the house and then we'll go and do the... Are your internal walls single um, brick or double? Single brick. Single, single brick, yep. Even that one there, we, had, we needed an engineer's report on that one. We had to do some certain things to it. They want a double there, but all the other walls uh, engineered are okay to be single. Yep. That's looking into the lounge room. So, um, and it's a lovely place to look because it's the temperatures, temperatures cosy there all the time. That's uh, that's our family, uh, our, our, our retreat, I guess you call it. We have a TV down there, but we don't have free to wear there. It's, we only have that big screen TV for the um, to watch docos on, so we don't have free to wear there. Have, we do have a TV in the lounge room that we watch what uh, the, the networks think are, is news, and uh, but we don't really watch much TV at all. So that's on the eastern side. That's outside on the eastern side, so that's that window on the left-hand side there to the south. That's our bedroom over the other side there. I'm sorry I didn't whip a snip around there before I took the photo, but that's the way it is. So that's the eastern side, and uh, the, the, the eastern sun in the summertime only spends a very short amount of time on that wall. So, and that's our western wall. The inside of our western wall there, uh, that's a couple of mates helping me put up uh, put up the glass doors that we, put, that we had roller doors and. So we put up glass doors there. That's pretty normal. Uh, one guy drilling a hole and two guys looking. So that's <laughs> that's the way. I think that's the way it works. So we've got no windows on our western wall. Now I did put a shed on the other side. I had a I had a, a uh, um, an incident that happened. And I wasn't sure that I was going to be here for the long term. So I put in a um, put in a uh, this this. Um, shed on the other side to put the um, a generator in because I didn't know what was going to happen in the future and I thought it would be a safe place to put it. I, I would like to my, my wife and kids to have stayed there. You can see no windows on the outside. That is double brick because that's the outside of the home. So you need double brick to stop you getting getting uh, getting damp. Uh, yes, I have cleaned the shed up. Uh, it looks a bit worse. Than it, but, uh, The 
this little camera here that uh, rocks the motor mine and he said that it'll pick up very, very sensitive, so it'll probably pick up that up in my boots. Alright, so that's the house, that's basically the layout of the house. Now we get into a bit more of the technical stuff. Alright. So when we when we built out there, we put in a standalone system. It was about 20 grand to put the put the power on and uh, it was 30 grand to put a standalone system on. So we put a standalone system on. And there was what they call a government rebate, or use the term rebate. Everyone here, I'm thinking they know about RECs, RECs and STCs and so forth. And uh, in the book I keep saying, it's not a rebate, it's not a rebate. I do finally explain how that works. But uh, there was a, I'll use the word subsidy, when we went, uh, when we went out there, $29,800 from memory, I think it was, to put the system on we had. And I think we paid about 14, close to 14 eight for it. So, um, <clears throat> so we've got 1.6 uh, kilowatts of collection that was up on the roof, and we lived we lived on that for a goodly goodly distance. Um, these, some of these photos were taken uh, off old photos because this is long ago before we had all these digital ones. So these are 35 mils that have just been scanned, so they're not super high quality. And uh, we spent a lot of time on the roof. Four times a year, we would we would change the um, change the angle. We were about uh, 11 degrees. We're just under 11 degrees, 10 degrees 48 minutes. Probably not perfect, but close to that. So it, it only moves a little bit to the north and, and back down again. Uh, and we did that four times a year for the first few years, then we dropped it down to two times a year, and now we don't do it again because it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, the books say it does, but it doesn't. And nowadays, uh, panels are so uh, inexpensive now, you just put a couple more panels on. So um, that's our... That's our um, the control gear inside, and the big unit on the on the right hand side. That's an EAR Australian Australian um, inverter. That's a uh, we, we get 2k out of that, and um, that's enough to run the house. We've never really wanted any more than that. We just can't cook toast and vacuum at the same time. But um, you just have to have to do things, and you do learn to, to live within um, the capacity of the machines you've got. That's the battery bank that we've got. Um, I was told that last five to seven years. Uh, they're in, well into their 19th year now. They are starting to show so um, a bit of wear and tear. They don't have the, they don't have the grunt. There's 42, 42 kilowatt hours of storage there, and we tried to cycle that only 20, 20 percent. They were the indus industry standard back in the old days, and now of course there's all sorts of all sorts of other um, lithium ion batteries that are coming in. And I'll show you another set of batteries that uh, that uh, I think are probably a good idea too. So um, they're lead acid. They're These ones here. I think there are better options now, but at the time um, that was that was pretty good. You, you, I, I, I'm sort of saying a bit more than what I was going to say, but I will, I will say this: when we put when we put our system on, a kilowatt hour was about twelve and a half cents, and Mr. Beatty said the price of electricity won't go up. I guarantee it, and uh, it went up to fourteen cents soon after that, and uh, now it's twenty eight eight. That's what's on our um, what we pay in our area. So, but. We paid about half price for our batteries because of what's called the subsidy, and we've got more than twice as much out of it. And even if these batteries last and they get to the end of their 20th year, it will still cost us more than 35 cents a kilowatt hour to have used those batteries. So I have people ask me, and should I get batteries, and what sort of batteries do you recommend? I say I don't recommend any because they're not viable at the moment, financially viable. If you want them for other reasons, um, then that's fine. But uh, as, as for, economically speaking, they're, they're not worth it. We've got the best out of it that you can get. This I owe to uh, probably this gadget here. I've also got this up on our side as well. These are great. I spoke to the fellow who invented these. He's, he's, uh, he's an Italian fellow. Lives in Australia. Lives in Brisbane here actually. And uh, they are great. And they just break up the sulfation in the bottom of lead acid batteries. You can put them in motor cars. You can put them in all sorts of anything. They, they, they also cater for other batteries as well, not just lead acid as well. Um, some batteries they don't do, you just check on the specs to see. But I, I think they're great, I recommend them, and um, I've got a couple of them, and I, I, I put them on some of the machines we've got at home. That's the other batteries that I was just going to just touch on. Uh, there were six of us who, who um, I know a few people, some, uh, one of my friends, uh, his partner's a freight forwarder, then I've got another mate who's, um, his partner's, uh, his wife's Chinese. So we, we um, worked all this out that we, we brought, um, six of us brought in, batteries to, the, to that extent. They're, they're nickel iron battery, nickel ferrous batteries, and uh, they may last 30 to 50 years. 
So um, it may not be in the best interest of people who sell those things for you to know that they have that sort of longevity. And you can, you can treat them uh, like a, a motocross bike, you can drive them pretty hard, so you don't have to cycle them just 20%, you can give them a good thrashing. I do know of a young fellow who's um, using those in the suburbs, and we'll just see how he goes. He's had his up now for probably two years. I know another fellow who's, uh, he's probably done eight years now with these batteries. They're, they're not acid, they're, they're an alkaline, and um, you need to change the, um, you need to, to uh, change the, um, uh, electrolytes, sorry, I couldn't think of the word, um, about every seven years, but certainly under 10 years, and then basically they, they run again like a new battery. So I, I can't recommend them, I don't know enough about them, but, but they are one of good those to, to do a project. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd mention it because not many people know about it. I did I did with Trevor up a couple of years ago and I asked him how about batteries, how long they were going to last and, and um, he was, uh, he was <clears throat> I think he was uh, interested that we had got at that stage 18 years and we're still going. So he hadn't heard of anyone else. I have actually heard of another guy, I haven't met him, but I heard of another guy in Perth who's got 18 years out of his battery. So we've, we've done a little bit better than, than that. So, uh, so where do we get our energy from? Well, we've got, we've got solar, uh, hot water, and we do have, a, we do have a, a, a fire inside. We don't really need it, but in the winter time it's great when the kids were young just to, just to get dried in front of the fire after you had a bath. It's just, it's, it's just great to sit in front of the fire and, and read a book. I think it's, uh, there's something good about a fire. So, uh, and of course we've got, um, we've got uh, our, our solar as well. And we also have gas. So when you have a look and you see how many kilowatt hours we pull out of the net, uh, off, the, off the grid, sorry. Um, <gasps> is that what you do? We've got, we've, we've got other expenses there. We, we get energy from other places. So what we did was we matched what we thought was the best match for the energy that we were going to use uh, expense-wise and also um, efficiency-wise. So uh, not everybody does that. I know a, a couple of guys who are very very um, efficiency orientated and they boil a jug all the time. And that's okay because we make compromises as well. My wife vacuums through the day and we're on the high tariff. We could be putting it in, but we do, we do quite well anyway. So some things you'll compromise, some, some things you won't. <clears throat> that's on the property. We, uh, we put the power on uh, 2012 and there's a good reason for that. Some people would know that the, um, the high tariffs ended, I think it was October 2012. So we had that organised then. That's our unit control unit from inside, so that's its first day on the job. And that's what our backyard looked like, looked like then. Um, that's a tank, so I've been asked, because uh, I have got these on other photos, so why you got a tank in the middle of the backyard? And that's, that's a do with water, that's another interesting, another interesting story as well. So um, we've got poly tanks down the other end. So um, and we talk about things like calcium carbonate and uh, pH and all that sort of business. Yep. Um, okay, so that's, that's basically what our, our home looked like for a, for a good while. And the two control, the two systems are set side by side. This, this one here um, runs two sheds. It runs the, 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 uh, our shouse and also another shed, the one I transplanted. And this one does our home and also the cottage. So they're two separate systems. And I think everyone here knows if you're on the, if you're on the high tariffs, you're not allowed to have uh, energy sources from anywhere else. So that's not permitted. So they're separate. Um, one thing I will add, if you're going to go on a standalone system, this was in the book, you've got to have one of these. This is a charger. And uh, for the people who are maybe listening to this, in the, in, right in the corner there, that's a, um, a 48 volt charger. I would never buy another one of those. I would not recommend them. And what I would say is if you haven't got enough energy in to get your batteries up to float, then run a small generator to run your home. Don't go charging your batteries because there are just so many losses. Every time you, you, you change, there's so many losses. And, um, yes? I'm just curious why you went to, from off-grid to on-grid. Went, to, sorry? Why did you go on-grid when you were off-grid? You were off-grid the whole time, weren't you? It's easy to get out Yep, because I'm married and... Um, <laughs> she wanted to go. Yeah. I, I would have had, we had a bit of a chat. Um, about doing double brick on the outside. I wanted to have something lighter on the outside. I want to have very low thermal mass on the outside. Um, but my wife wanted, um, like the idea of a brick home, and we're still married, living happily ever after. So, happy wife, happy life. So, that was the backyard, that's what it looked like. And then we had a hailstorm come through. And does anyone remember that? That wasn't a couple of years ago. And it was fantastic, and it destroyed ruse and who knows what 
including um, three of our panels that were there, pretty badly damaged, and a few other ones got a few bullet holes in them. So they came off. Now, interestingly enough, those the, the old ones that were there were pretty good. They didn't they didn't sustain any damage. They may have been in the right place. The three that got damaged were slightly to the east there, around this area here. But they had to change the whole system. That's the way the thing works. And uh, we ended up with six cases. Now, when that was done, it was done a year before they changed the legislation and backdated the legislation. You could put over 100, and, you could put 133% of what your inverter would handle, and still keep your high tariff input. So, um, so we were well and truly inside that. I did hear of other people who, who uh, upgraded and, and, and put a few more panels on, and then when the um, when the uh, legislation was backdated, or the what they call agreement, we didn't agree to anything. We just get told what we're going to, what's going to happen. Uh, and so there were a few few people who were involved in that, and they lost their in high input tariff. So um, those things happen. Did your building insurance cover the damage to the family? Yeah, interesting. I could sit down and have a beer with you and tell you about that. There was about eighty eighty three thousand dollars worth of damage done to our place. Yep. So we had three people came out and they picked the lowest quote and then they didn't finish one shed because they said I could outsource that somewhere else. And they had a budget of, I think, about 600 bucks. Yeah. I won't say who the insurance company is because I want to stay where I am and I don't need any more dramas at the moment. So, but insurance company. Um, with the 6K on, you can see we've got 5K uh, coming in a little bit more regularly. It, interestingly enough, I, I just... Um, I'll just tell you a story. Uh, a fellow called, um, a mate of mine lives over the road from my mum's place, and uh, his name's Nick White. I don't think he mind me mentioning his name. He's got a 4.8 uh, uh, kilowatts of collection. He's got on a tracker, he built a tracker. And um, I was down at his place one day, and uh, I was bragging that we got in 32 kilowatt hours. And on that same day, he got 42 and a half kilowatt hours on that day. Interestingly enough, that's the best day we've ever had. And I thought, wow, that's a bit interesting. So even with our 6K system, we still haven't beaten that one day with the 5K system. I have no idea why, but uh, I'm sure there's other guys out there. I haven't chased anyone up, but I'm sure people who, who, um, who keep data on this, if they went back to that day and we, uh, we found out it might, it might have been more people may have found the same thing that they got more in that day. Interestingly enough, when, when I, was, uh, I was chasing Trevor, um, I was at Nick's place and I said, oh, I'm chasing a fellow who's in the game. And he said, oh, um, who are you chasing? And I said, oh, Trevor Burrell. And he said, oh, Trev? <laughs> so what? He said, I'm going, I'm going uh, bushwalking with him tomorrow. <laughs> so it's a small world, isn't it? It's a small world. Okay, so um, uh, I, I took that photo there because um, that's when we hit uh, 60,000 kilowatt hours. I say it that way because it sounds a lot. 60,000, 1,000 watt hours. That's how much we put in. We're on our way to 70 now, that was a while ago. And I, I waited around, I went back, just waiting for it to, to come up so I could take the photo. As soon as it hit 60, I took the photo. So, um, all right, so that's, that's the energy that we've got. That's what we use. And as I said, we try and match uh, our energy needs to, um, to uh, our, our energy supply to our energy need, or our source to our energy needs. So solar's good for some things and, and uh, uh, a, com a combustion stove we thought we would put in there, we didn't. But we do, uh, we always have a kettle on the, on the fire, we've got a fire going, there's always something cooking on it. So thermal stability of the home, this is really, just put your hand up, just out of curiosity, if this is really the thing you're interested in. No hands, one hand, three hands, everyone, oh, I'll, I'll have your hands up. This is one of the reasons that I, I sort of got into it, I wanted a comfortable home. So, okay, so that's, that's the winter solstice, that's the, uh, the, the, the shortest day of the year, and the sun is down nice and low, and the sun shining through our northern windows and, and warming up the inside of our home. That's around the other side, that's the summer solstice. It's probably, not, I don't think that was the exact day, but it's pretty close, pretty close. And then back to, back to winter again. And I've got photos, not every day, I don't have 365 photos, but you can see that the shadow <clears throat> just creeps down the wall and then back up again. You, can, you can't tell the time by it, but you pretty much know what the day is. So uh, our dog knows where all the wood spots are. So um, it's, she's pretty much got everything working. Yeah, in the summertime, she doesn't have to go walking around because inside the house is, is pretty good. You can pretty much land around wherever you want. You don't have to go finding a warm spot. 
and inside our, inside our home is around the 23 degrees. There it's 23 and a half, nearly 24, and that's pretty standard all the time. And that's because we've got so much, so much uh, thermal mass inside. So, but I will tell you this. I will tell you this. I took that the other day. That was last week. Now I don't know whether you noticed, but we've had quite a bit of heat for a long period of time. That's the worst we've ever had in our house. The BERS um, uh, programming said that we should, we sh our home shouldn't be any hotter than 27 degrees, and it should only do that for three and a half days a year. But as you can see, the computer modelling is not always perfect, and we did get up to 31 degrees, very high humidity. So, and. The sad part about that is if, if you have a home like ours with a lot of thermal mass, it takes a long time for the internal temperature to change. So it's, it's, slow to, it's slow to heat up and it's slow to cool down. So it's on its way back now. That's the worst we've ever seen. Imagine what it would have been like if, um, if the house wasn't orientated correctly or we'd had a tiled roof. It just would have been terrible inside the home. Absolutely. Um, this is down in our shed. We homeschooled our kids for, for a while. My wife and I are both teachers. Um, we work in support. We've both got um, postgrads and special ed. I'm, she's still in the game. I'm retired now. So, um, so we're good at simplifying things. That's, that's what we've been doing for the last uh, nearly 40 years. Um, so the shed, this is, uh, this is um, where we're putting the glass doors on. It's quite comfortable down there. The temperatures are very, very stable down there. That's probably the most stable part of the house because it's got the most amount of bricks down there. And um, it's nice inside too as well. So when it's hot or cold outside, it's pretty nice inside. Okay, so some statistics and some advantages of, of having the, the home that we've got. Here's our stats. That's our last bill. And um, so that's from October to January. We're just at the end of February. So that's the latest one that we've got. Uh, 92 days, and this is how much we paid them. Not a lot, and that's been going on since 2012, and that'll go on till 2028, and then we'll rethink what we're going to do after that. So uh, that's what they paid us this time, just under $1,200. dollars i was just saying about uh, Nick, he um, he really gets under 1,200 bucks, and um, we've never we've never got over 1,200 bucks. So um, is that a quarter? That's a quarter, yeah. We don't get that every quarter. It averages out a little over four grand a year. So I, I say we get four. I always, I always um, uh, understate. Um, so we have averaged out over the year. We're, we're, we're averaging better than four grand a year. Yeah. So I will, I will say this. I, I, I did a talk the other day, and I, I said um, so over the just from 2012 to 2028, we're going to have put in 60 grand's worth of electricity. We're actually going to put in more than that. Probably close to 66. So we're 60 grand better off than most people. And during that time, we're not going to pull any, um, we're not going to pay a bill, so that's going to save us another 30. So we're about 90 grand better off than, than the average bloke in the street. Um, it's actually closer to 100, about 96 grand if you, if you take the figure that you've got so far. What's the figure you care about? Figure you 54. 54. Yeah, that's right. Our, our plan is to, is to put in as much as we can and um, yeah. put out night. Yeah. 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 Um, if, you, if you have a look at that, that's, that's our average daily use. Um, it's not actually our average daily use at all. There's, there's actually two components to this. Um, but you can see we're pretty consistent even down to two decimal places. So I was pretty happy to show this, to show this one here. So that's what we did last year at the same time. So the seasons, when they're pretty consistent, we do pretty much the same thing. And the last, one, the one that we got correspondingly last year was eleven $1 hundred and seventy-eight dollars. So it's 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 a percent difference. So we're we're pretty we're pretty consistent doing what we're doing. I will tell you about the uh, two kilo, kilowatt hours that we've pulled out. That's just what we've pulled from the grid at night. It's not what we use. We use six about six and a half kilowatt hours a day, to maybe eight sometimes but uh, sometimes less. Of course, that time of the year when you go away uh, and have a bit of a holiday and you're not using any electricity at all, that helps with your stats a little bit as well. So that's not a true representation. So I think probably a little over three, we pull about a little over three kilowatt hours uh, out, of the, out of the per day, and that's just done at night. <clears throat> Ideally, I mean, we, we, um, all our lights are uh, LEDs and um, we do have a couple of fluoro still. And our biggest electricity consumer is our refrigerator, which is as energy efficient as we can. And it's got its own little spot where, it's, where it can uh, vent the heat very easily. So it's, and it lives in a lovely, 
lovely environment. The same as our inverters, like the, the inverter I was talking about, the EAR, that's nearly 20 years old, and most of them fail seven, eight years. I was talking to a lady the other day, helping her out with something, and her inverter is not even five years old, and it's failed. So hers was outside. Ours is in an in a, in a ideal, almost air-conditioned environment. So, um, and we could probably get through the night on 600 watt hours if we, if we didn't use any electricity. Maybe we'll do it just for one night to check, but that's, that's the average, about 3 kilowatt hours uh, that we pull out from the grid. And inside our, inside our temper, so we, get, we, get, we don't get a bill, we get paid, and, um, and it's comfortable inside our home. So they are the advantages. So here are the benefits. I thought I'd go through and I'd just say the benefits of, of learning about this I probably haven't shown you a lot. I, I sort of thought everyone here would, would have a bit of an understanding, and, and I think you do. You're certainly miles ahead of, uh, of most people out there, and, um, and of course of some builders as well. First advantage is we have, we have good temperatures inside our home all year round. Our average daily cost is that. The infrastructure's cost us, but the amount of money that we have been paid for, our input is paid for everything, and then some. We get a bag of money every year. And another good thing about where we are probably won't make a lot of difference, but, but uh, houses in the suburbs, their energy efficient homes rent and sell for more. So um, one of the studies that uh, I've got in the book uh, uh, says that uh, in, in Campbell, homes that are, have a seven star rating as opposed to a three star rating uh, are, worth, are worth, now I've got to remember the figures, but up around 15% more, and they're worth about 7% more to, to rent. So um, they're becoming more desirable. I call them des resident, desirable residences. So when you know about this stuff, um, I could probably tell you this. My wife and I just bought an investment home, and they always say position, position, position. Well, position, position, and thermal efficiency. That was the, that was the things we looked at. And the place we bought is, is brick inside. It's double brick, but the internal walls are, are just plasterboard. But it's very comfortable when you go inside. It's uh, you know, there's a lot of work, so um, but um, but you can you can you can feel the um, the, uh, the it, it's worth it. And I think as people wake up and EERs become mandated around Australia, they are in in um, in the ACT. My understanding is uh, South Australia is going to come on board. I call them road worthies for houses, and uh, I think that's the way it's going to go. People are going to want to know. At the moment, you, you, have to, you have to supply uh, an EER if you want to rent or sell a house in Canberra, and I think that's going to happen it's around Australia. It's happening worldwide. Um, I was at a do the other day, and, and I was talking to a fellow there who just come back from Scotland, and he asked me, he said, oh, we're talking about different things, and he said, oh, what's, uh, what are these figures here? And I said, oh, OK, I think that's what this means, and this is uh, what the, the EER rating, they have a different name for it over there, of course. And, um, and so this is what it is at the moment, and this is its potential because not every place can be fixed. Some things uh, can't be fixed. So that's our home. That's pretty much the story. Um, the design of our home is one of the reasons that we, we have the, the conditions inside our home, that we have the nice, comfortable ambient temperatures. I'll just say with design, you've got orientation, which of course is very important. You've got to get that right first time. It's very difficult to change if it can be changed at all. The next thing is your placement of thermal mass. So there's four, there's four things that I, I think are there's more than that, but these are the four major ones. Placement of your thermal mass, and uh, of course having a tile roof. This house we've just bought's got a tile roof, but it is insulated on the top, um, so that's that's uh, that's very good. But it would be better if it didn't have that. So there's pros and cons. Uh, of course, the, the the next thing is the um, the glazing, the, the type of windows you have, where they're placed, and uh, the size of them, and then insulation. So that's all part of your design. So those four aspects are important. Then inside the home. You, the appliances you put in, the energy efficient appliances you put in, and um, if you've got a car that gets um, 100 miles to the gallon, well that's an, an efficient, efficient gadget to have, but then you also got to drive it properly as well, and I, I refer to that as your habits. So the habits that you, that you use are going to make a big difference. If you're going to leave your iron running while you go shopping or on the internet, it's probably not, a, probably not an efficient thing to do. So that's pretty much my story in a nutshell. Um, <gasps> That's about it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You've got to talk in front of the camera. You've got to talk in front of the camera, no? Um, I was recently um, speaking to a friend of mine in, in Victoria, and they had, had a really bad hailstone uh, damage down there, you know, quick ball size. She's
She had two skylights in her very old home, and um, you can imagine the she had to move out of the house. The, the, the street had to the whole street had to move out, and um, so. If you're considering having skylights in, make sure that they are hailproof, if there is such a thing. Um, huge water damage, the, the ceiling in her um, living room, just, yeah, finished. So, um, yeah, any questions for John before we, we have supper? Yeah, what was the problem with your uh, blue for the spotlight? How was that so difficult? Um, we, could, we couldn't find an engineer who would, who would sign off on it, so we had the plans that were drawn up. Um, the fellow who, who I showed you before, Laurie had drawn the plans up, but then it has to be engineered. So um, we can go out and get that built, but it, it, it needs to be engineered to be approved. So and they were going to be over the sloping roof, over the kitchen and dining yeah. room? So basically, look yeah. what it was in the And what's the roof structure there? Um, steel or timber? Yeah, no, steel. Everything's steel. But it's not trusses there, obviously. Um, what we put up was what, what you saw, but we couldn't get we couldn't get the, the to put the clear story windows in. We couldn't get someone. We couldn't find an engineer who would sign off on it. So we couldn't get someone to engineer. I got I got a fellow down. Um, yeah, I can't think of the place, but just uh, just north of Petrie, that industrial area through there, <coughs> who would who would. Um, well, he, he he did the trusses, but he said no, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't. Um, wouldn't make them clear stories. So. Someone at the park? Some, someone at the park. Some, no, it wasn't someone at the park. It was, but someone at some the park would do it, would they? I don't know. Would it be fair in the interview with Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to very strange. <laughs> what floor coverings did you have where you had the dog sitting in the sun? That's carpet, and, and because my wife wants on, carpet, so we put carpet there. I would probably tile the whole place. Because uh, when you carpet when you carpet a room, you um, you actually uh, insulate it. Yeah. But the, the difficulty with tiles, though, is it's a bit hard to walk on. We, we put down tiles for that same reason. Yep. And we do have a skylight. Yep. And it works beautifully. Yep. But my wife complains that it's a bit hard to walk on. Yeah. Yep. There's pros and cons for everything. We, the, the place that we're just um, that we're doing up at the moment, we're going to put tiles right through. I'm going to be up on site at 6 a.m. in the morning to shift um, 154 square metres of tiles. That's not the size of the house, is smaller than that, but we're going, we're going to do two jobs. So, another place. So, um, we're just going to tile the whole thing right through. John, the uh, academy brick walls, the walls, are they all insulated in the cavity? No. No, just air in there. No, that, and, and it's, I, I don't think it's a, it's a, over a long period of time when you get long, uh, um, a lot of cold for, for weeks and weeks or a lot of heat for weeks and weeks, it will make a difference because you, you but, but the gap that's in there for, for our climate here, we just built for our climate and it's, and it's quite, it's quite okay. We don't have to, we don't have to um, put in the extremities, we don't need triple glazing and so forth because we just don't get those sort of temperatures. We were down in Tasmania at, at the beginning of the year, no, no, sorry, um, was probably November or something, towards, towards the end of the year, but it was still cool down there, and you'd build a totally different house down there. Mm. Um, you certainly wouldn't do what we did up here, because I think the ground temperature down, um, down uh, around Tasmania is probably around 14 degrees. So if, you, if you're up in Darwin, I think it's 30, 31 degrees. But where we are here in Brisbane, we're very fortunate, we've got a lot of, lot of good things happening here, and ground temperature around 23 degrees is very comfortable. Yep. The star rating, is that determined by calculation or by measurement? If you want to sell your house for someone and you want to give a star rating for it, yep. you have to legally have somebody sign off on that? That's right. Basically what happened in 2003, uh, there was, there was um, mandated that every new home had to, had to reach a minimum of six star rating. Standalone home was six stars. If you're building a, 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 a two-storey, double-storey building or multiple storeys, it had to be a five-star rating. <clears throat> there are three programs, approved programs. One of them is BERS. Uh, another one's Accurate 5. Can someone help me with the third one? I couldn't basic. think of what it was. Basic. Basic? It's New South Wales. I was going to say, that's, that's a New South Wales measurement. But um, but this is this is Australia-wide, so there's the three. I can't think of what the third one is. Yeah. My apologies. 
it is um, who's, who's Net, the, the chair. Yeah, Natters is the uh, National Australia Health, Housing and Energy that's, yep. So that's that's the uh, that's the standard that you have to meet as a Natters rating. It was brought in in 2003. There are three approved programs. Two of them we we mentioned, VERS and also Accurate Five. I think it is. I can't think of the third one. They all have a rating now out of ten. When we did ours, it was before any of this was happening, and um, they only went. It, VERS only went up to nine. Now it's all standardised. It goes to ten. You get a, a, a Natters rating out of ten, and you will not get permission to build if you don't have a six star rating. So you need to get a six star rating before you, the uh, the council sign off and say yes, you can do it. Get out of jail free car and if you put a ceiling fan in the outdoor entertainment area and you end up doing four and a half to most of the rest of the Yeah, I can't make comment on that. Um, <laughs> 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 I, I, I was um, uh, talking to this gentleman here earlier, I, and I think I did say this to a few people. People do things back to, I think people do things back to front. Anyone who's thinking of building, I, I, use, I use the term. Your mum used to say, go and put your shoes and socks on. You don't put your shoes and socks on. You put your socks on first, then you put your shoes on. If you're going to, if you're going to build something, most people go out and they find a builder. He or she, uh, whatever gender, um, sorry, I've got to be right with that now. Um, they're, the last, they're the last people you want to talk to. You want to have your natters waiting under your arm. You want to have your land, and you know that your land will let you do what you need, need to do. If you want to put up a, a, um, a, a home that's... 50, 50 metres or 30 metres, whatever, you need that, you need to be able to put, orientate that correctly on your block. So once you've got your block and your nat is waiting, then you march off and, and you talk to builders then. So um, I think you get a better result if you put your socks on before you put your shoes on. Any other questions? Retrofitting a tin shed that's really hot, I mean a five bar, five bay tin yep. shed. Yep, yep. ceiling. What would you do? I do, I do exactly what I did on and you would pull the roof off? No, 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 we didn't do that at all. Are you going to put a ceiling in? Well, no, but we'd like something to be a lot cooler in that shed. Yep, so that air gap, um, is it works out roughly around $12 a square metre. Um, so you put it in, you would be able to put it in after, even though you've got... Yep, as, as a retrofit, is it like a, you've got a portal frame shed, I'm thinking, like you've got posts that hold it up? Yep. Yep, yep. So, um, and have you got have you got stabilising, or you've you just got sheets on it? Sheets. Sheets on it, yeah. So basically, if you put if you put um, this, I, I just call it air gap. Yeah, the roof, really. yeah, you put it in the roof. I put it in the walls as well because what it'll do is the the steel will get very hot, especially where the um, sun's shining on it, and it just radiates that. Uh, it also it also transmits it as well. It does the the, the three things that move move um, the temperature around and. It, it, it doesn't hold heat for a long period of time, but you're probably there during the daytime. And um, I think the heat is a natural enemy of anyone in Queensland. So, um, so how, I, how do you attach it? Though? You yeah, that's what I was wondering. Sorry, my hearing's not that good. How do you attach it to the? Oh, I have. No, do, do you have a space between the air gap and the and the? No, roof? no, just put it straight up on the straight up on the steel, mm -hmm. and um, you can you can you, you can glue it up. Um, you can hold it up with you. You've probably got cross hashing straps there, uh, straps that, that um, yeah. stabilise the building. Yeah, just put it in behind that. And, and just, if you put, just it in, put it in. Behind that. Sorry? Just put it in behind that. That's not so easy. That's what husbands are for. That's what husbands are for. <laughs> it's, it's achievable, and if you really want to reduce the, the, uh, the, the temperature inside, you've got to stop the heat transfer because that's just radiating, that's what it's doing, you've got to stop the radiating and it doesn't, that, 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 uh, that stuff it doesn't have an R rating, that is it doesn't have a, an insulating rating, but, it, but it, it, it's very, very effective. I would, I would use it, I'd build a steel shed and live in a steel shed and I could make a steel shed, now I know I've already done it. And actually, I've done a couple and we did a, we did a job in, in Vanuatu, um, we've got one down on a beach in Millet that was, that was built in exactly the same thing. So, I've had a bit of experience with it. I'm not a builder, my background's in education, but I've been involved. We put, we put that inside the house, but the, we didn't do that in the shed. Yeah. Um, Question over here. You mentioned 31 degrees. And uh, we have the same experience, you know, it's fine for a few days and then I'm standing like a bit 
rolling on. Yeah. We just came up to Augusta. Yeah. Given, given what we're experiencing at the moment, which is longer and higher conditions in South East Queensland, how do you plan to cope with, with that given the other, you know, how do you get rid of it? Well, I guess you've got to, I mean, we can't change our home now. We've got a lot of thermal mass inside. And um, when it, I guess we've just got to deal with it. We do have an air conditioner in our, in our, in our bedroom. It doesn't work because we, don't, we haven't used it enough and it's gummed up. I've got a mate who's in the territory at the moment. He said he'll have a look at it when he comes back because it's probably going to be used, I don't know, maybe 20 times at the most. And, um, but um, the good thing about sealing the house up, and yes, you can run an air conditioner there and, and cool it down, and, it, and it'll hold the, it'll, it. It's a lot more efficient, so your, your air conditioner's not going to have to work as hard. So that's on our side. But, but that's right, you've got to balance out how much thermal mass do you actually put in your house. So if, if you're living up in the tropics, I wouldn't build a house like that if I was lived up in Cairns. I would not build that house in Cairns. So I think it's a very suitable house for what we've got here. Uh, I probably would have less thermal mass on the outside because I, I, I see that as a as a advantageous. But uh, my wife wanted a, a, a brick home, and it, it all works well. It, it, there'd be a difference. I don't know what the figures would be, but it would be better. Um, if I was if I was building that house again, it's a great home. I'd make a few changes, but probably not a lot. Probably not a lot. I think we did a pretty good job for the area that we are. And I just I, we, we've had hot summers before, they'll cool down, they'll get hot again and we might get some bad ones. This last one was pretty bad. So I guess you just got to deal with it. So one last question. Sorry, I just got a comment. What about Nancy's question about using trees? Shade the trees. But you've got no trees around your house. If you had shading shade in South Australia, yeah. 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 you could um, trees the trees are shaded and reduce your area. That would be well, if you just get the simple streets, that's right. If, if, you, if you get, um, we're just trying to think, is it is it is the simple streets? Yeah. 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 Okay. So what happens is in, in the winter time uh, they have, they have leaves and in the summer time they fall off, they fall off in autumn, fall, and then um, you get you get the fall. There was a lady who lived down the end of our street. She um, uh, they built their home so it ran parallel with the road and. Uh, they, it's it's very very inefficient. They got a tile roof, bad 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 all the way down. Anyway, um, she sort of knows what, what I do now, and uh, she said, "Oh, we've got a, we've got a bush out the back, uh, deciduous yep." And I said, um, "She said it just stops the sun from coming in." I said, "Oh, did you paint it?" And she said, "No, it just grew up." I said, "Well, the universe is looking out. It's doing exactly what she needs. The western sun, the western sun. We don't have to worry about that. I, I put that that shed that's um, that's just there." Yeah, that's that's all about the Sydney tree. So, and and in the in the summertime, uh, we get more of a westerly. The, the sun goes down more to the west, and we we get probably less than ten minutes of a of a waning sun on on our, on our southern wall. So, um, we we were very fortunate that we could we could build where we built, built and um, although you couldn't have built anywhere you wanted, we only had a few, a few places. And originally. Um, I won't go back, but uh, there was a spot where we were, we were originally going to build. But once and we actually leveled that spot there, and um, but we wouldn't build there because um, there's just no there's no um, breezes and there's no there's no um, cool air falling off the hill. Tom, thank you very much.